uh, Ms. Lofgren. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman, and thanks to you, uh, Director Ray, for your service uh, to our country. I want to thank uh, especially uh, the Bureau for the diligence with which uh, you have pursued those who attacked the Capitol and the Capitol Police and essentially attacked uh, our democratic uh, system of government on January 6th. We wish you well in those efforts. I have a, a couple of questions about the rule of law. We all believe in the rule of law and we think that, and I know you do too, that the rule of law applies to the government as well. Leads me to a question about section 702 of the FISA uh, law. As uh, you know, there has been a review by the uh, uh, court uh, on the use of FISA. And as you, I'm sure, know in its latest review, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance the Court found uh, widespread violations of the FBI's internal rules and the law's restrictions on how and when the government may use the information it collects under Section 702. For example, the court found, and I quote, um, uh, compliance in incidents suggesting that the FBI's uh, failure to properly apply its querying standard when searching 702 uh, acquired information was more pervasive than previously uh, believed. In one case, FBI personnel queried foreign intelligence databases for the names over one, of over 100 business, religious, civic, and community uh, leaders who had applied to the FBI's Citizen Academy. The court also found dozens of cases where agents had searched uh, warrantless foreign intelligence collections in the course of criminal investigations. Um, in summary, the court expressed concerns about, quote, the apparent widespread violations of safeguards on the use of warrantless collections. Um, in response to all of these uh, criticisms and concerns, the FBI, uh, it seems to me, basically said they had been working on changes, but that had uh, been suspended because of the uh, COVID pandemic uh, protocols. But here's my question, Director Ray. Section 702 was enacted in 2008. The FBI and other intelligence agencies have had more than a decade to implement what the law requires. And yes, it's 2021, and the FISA court is still finding, this isn't the first time, still finding widespread violations and failures uh, where the FBI uses basically the hook of foreign surveillance, but it's using it to avoid its warrant, re warrant requirements for domestic law enforcement. Why is this happening? Well, Congressman, uh, I obviously want to make sure, and I'm fiercely committed to making sure that the FBI complies with FISA in all respects. Uh, the FISA court's concerns are certainly concerns that I take especially seriously as somebody who's a former prosecutor, former defense attorney, uh, former assistant attorney general in charge of the criminal division and now FBI director, our relationship with and our candor with and our transparency with and the confidence that we earn with the court is of utmost importance to me. Now, the, the opinion that you are referring to from the court uh, does approve our procedures, uh, did not, in fact, find abuses or misconduct, and has to deal specifically with the querying, the running of searches in our databases. So we have taken, we have taken. He also found that you had used, the FBI had used data for internal domestic investigations. That's a violation of the purpose of 702. And I'm, and again, I'm not going to speak to the specific instances in the report because I think that would take longer than we have here, uh, among other things. But I would say that we have done a number of things to try to address the issues identified by the court. We have made uh, significant changes to the documentation requirements to assure accountability, oversight requirements, guidance and training enhancements, systems modifications, which may not sound glamorous, but is incredibly important because it helps yes. prevent uh, non-compliance. And then last but not least, something I particularly want to highlight, I created a new, a whole new department in the FBI, an Office of Internal Auditing, headed by a 
senior partner from a top, you know, a big four accounting firm uh, who also had prior uh, in his life been an FBI agent uh, and is consulting with an, a premier outside uh, uh, world-class consulting firm to stand up an office of internal audit specifically focused on FISA to ensure that we have a world-class compliance program and world-class internal auditing program to Director make sure that we don't have these gentlemen, the, the general lady's time has expired. If I may, Mr. Chairman, can we get the director to commit to have this individual brief the committee on those procedures? I, I'd be happy to see if we can get the uh, the committee a briefing on, on what we're doing in this space. Thank you. The, uh, Thank Mr. Thank you. Yield back. Uh, the general lady yields back. Mr. Ray was uh, fr flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, and I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues, and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases. And this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm -hmm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media.
When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other Capitol she's ever been in is a state Capitol that's open 24 seven. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between, you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is. It's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.